She is far more human than... <clears throat> hey everyone, how's it going? Doug here, and we're back with chapter 6 of Archangel. Last week we read chapter 5, and Uriel and Chandra made their way from Chandra and Alina's cottage to Zezerat, the fortress city of Bodis. On their way, uh, we learned they encountered some demons, they spoke a bit about why it took so long for Uriel to descend from heaven to earth, uh, and why 10 years after the war started and everything's been lost. And then once they did enter the city, over top of that magnificent lava sewer waste system, um, they were confronted by somebody in the sewers who spoke to Uriel or who proclaimed Uriel to be his brother. So let's jump into chapter six. Also, if you hear a howl in the background, it's uh, the wind, because it's brutal out today. A figure came rushing out of the gloom. Uriel, confused, shifted into a defensive stance, ready to lash out with his fiery blade. The figure stopped in its tracks. It is you. Little brother, lower your sword. The dancing white flames illuminated the man's face. Uriel studied him for a moment until realization sparked in his eyes. The man was tall, as tall as Uriel, but broader. He was wearing the same kind of black leather vest and pants, though the other man's were noticeably worn and patched. At his hip were two guns, one on either side, and a large knife handle glinted in the low light from out of a combat boot. His hair was a dark brown, its short curled strands a nest of dirt and litter. Most remarkable was his skin. The man's bare arms were lighter than Uriel's, but the tattoos of an angel were unmistakable. The slim metal band around his neck only reinforced Uriel's thinking. Holy shit. Chandra stammered. Is he an angel too? Uriel sheathed his blade hastily as he surged towards the man. Not just any angel, Uriel said with a smile. The two of them embraced one another. Raphael, words cannot express how... The archangel could not finish his thought. He simply embraced the angel. Then you know they must be even more lost on me, Raphael said, moving his brother back to arm's length. It was only then that the other angel's eyes moved to examine Chandra. His own green eyes widened in surprise when he saw the crimson in hers. Uriel, he hissed as he reached for a pistol at his hip. What in this twisted world have you brought with you? Uriel moved with uncanny precision as he held Raphael's gun down while stepping between the two. With his free hand, he motioned for the half-demon to remain calm. Raphael, no. It is fine. His words were calm, confident. I would not be here if it were not for her. She is far more human than demon, I assure you of that, and... I believe you two have met before. The older angel balked at him. Disbelief battled with trust across his face. Impossible, Raphael said dismissively. I'm not in the business of making half-demon friends. Uriel gave Chandra a look, a silent warning not to make some sort of sarcastic comment. The Cambian pursed her lips but stood still in an effort not to look threatening. Please, brother, give her a chance, the younger archangel pleaded. Raphael's eyes darted back and forth between Uriel and the half-demon. With a deep breath, and more than a little reluctance, his pistol was returned to its holster. Thank you. Uriel's smile was genuine. Chandra, this is Raphael. He is my brother, one of the archangels. Chandra visibly slouched. She pinched the bridge of her nose and wiped a hand down her face. It smeared some of the dirt that marred her pale, glowing skin. You have to be fucking with me. The half-demon turned around and walked back and forth. What did I do to deserve this? Bad enough I meet two angels in two days, but do they have to be goddamn archangels? Might as well put me out of my misery now. The Cambian was talking to herself more than the two angels, but Raphael still laughed. It was a deep, hearty noise that filled the tunnel they were in. I will accept her as she is, Uriel, both for your sake and because I have not laughed like that in a long time. The older archangel clapped Uriel's shoulder and motioned for Chandra to follow. Come, both of you. We have a place, a safe place. Uriel looked towards his half-demon companion with a smile. It was to reassure her, but also to ask for her consent. Uriel was overjoyed with this turn of events, that that was easy for an angel to say. Chandra's world had already been turned upside down by one archangel. There was only so much she would be able to take. He saw her look behind her warily. Whether she worried more for herself or her sister, Uriel could not be sure. In Chandra's mind, killing a demon lord might mean a more likely return home than meeting an archangel and his friends in the sewers. When an archangel says, we, it doesn't make all of us feel better. Chandra tried to sound humorous, but her worry was obvious. I will not let anything happen to you, Chandra. Uriel tilted his head in a silent request for her to follow. And if Uriel vouches for you, Raphael added from ahead of them, then you have my protection as well. 
The older archangel led the pair through the tunnels, to parts where even Chandra had not been before. The sewers created a maze under the city and, Uriel noted, was an invaluable tool for moving around, especially for a Cambian, and apparently angels too. The network of tunnels seemed to span miles, all wide enough for a group to march single file on either side of the stream of sewage. That stench, though, the unending, permeating smell that still stung his nose and eyes, was persistent with each step. How did you find us? Chandra broke the silence of their walk. The archangel was taking them far off her normal course, leading them to parts of the sewer she had never been before. Something had to have tipped him off. One of my angels, one whose talent is sensing other entities, felt something strange. Uriel spoke and moved loudly. He did not seem to care for stealth or what might lie ahead. Uriel also noticed that there were none of the sick in these tunnels. He said it felt like an angel and a demon, but masked. None of the others could feel it, so I decided to investigate. Even now I can barely detect either of you. Uriel flashed his new rune on his forearm. The cuts were already faded scars, but the markings would not leave his flesh. Raphael gave a quick glance over the work. Well, that explains it. Angelic and infernal combined? He sounded impressed. I never thought of that. I don't think we even have a word for it. Human? Chandra offered. Raphael, when you say that it was one of your angels who detected us, exactly how many more are there? When the archangel informed her that they numbered nearly 30 angels, Uriel wondered if expletives made up the majority of the half-demon's vocabulary. It elicited another laugh from Raphael, a noise that preceded them down the tunnel. The walls of the sewer seemed to be the same wherever they went. Most of the area had the same periodic lights as Uriel and Chandra had entered, but other places were completely shrouded in darkness. It was in one of these blankets of shadows that Uriel noticed something out of the ordinary. Ah, here we are. Raphael opened his arms in front of him, gesturing to a rectangular hole in the wall. It was just tall enough for someone Raphael's size to fit through. Uriel peered through the opening and saw a short hallway, barely noticeable with the absence of light. He strained his eyes and saw that wards and runes had been carved along the length of the corridor, terminating at the far end in... in oh. A word's missing. So is my pen. He strained his eyes and saw that wards and runes had been carved along the length of the corridor, terminating at the far end in a sturdy iron door. The faintest traces of light did all it could to crawl out from under the door, but it was almost immediately extinguished. Where? Chandra looked in the same direction as the archangels, but was clearly puzzled. When Raphael laughed again, Chandra's expression tried to convey her annoyance. The archangel's laugh was infectious, though. All the half-demon could see was the same stone wall that had followed them since they entered the sewers. Much like your home, Uriel explained, this entrance has been warded, likely against anything that is not an angel. It's just one thing after another with you, isn't it? You angels can be so inconsiderate. There was a bustle of sound from beyond the iron door. The conversations were hushed, but so many beings speaking at once played off one another in a whispered cacophony. The hearts of both Uriel... Cacophony is a great word. The hearts of both Uriel and Chandra were pounding, though for different reasons. The archangel moved in front of the Cambion. Whatever happens when this door opens, stay behind me. You are not in any danger, he promised. He did not know how the other angels would react to the sight of a half-demon. He did not even know how they would react to his own arrival. Ten years was not a long span of time for any angel, but a decade of fighting, dying, and hiding surely felt like centuries to those who had been trapped here. Raphael entered first, pulling open the iron door as if it were nothing. It did not squeal or complain as it was opened, and the space beyond it was just as silent. The atmosphere was uneasy at best as they walked through the door. Chandra sat close behind Uriel, her body tense as if expecting the worst. Both newcomers looked around their new refuge. They had come into a large room, easily 30 meters on each side. It was filled with desks, tables, and bookshelves all arranged in an organized fashion around the perimeter. The center was left almost empty, save for two dozen or so angels that stood and stared at them. A handful of others sat on some of the tables or leaned against the walls, but all eyes were on the three that had just come through the door. Torches filled with magical light flickered along the wall, but a dim light bulb glowed in the middle of the ceiling. The angels could draw some electricity from the city, though not much, it seemed. Uriel, my brother, I welcome you and your companion. Raphael paused and glanced at the Cambion, slightly embarrassed. I'm sorry, was it Chandra? The half-demon nodded. She was sure, however, that the others in the room were thinking of a different name for her. Uriel and Chandra, I welcome you to Sanctuary. Not one angel made a single noise. Not one shuffled their feet or even risked drawing breath. 
Only their eyes moved as they took in the two newcomers, or rather, they scrutinized them. All of them knew of Uriel, if not personally, then in name and reputation. Their eyes barely paid him a passing glance before shifting to Chandra. It was then that the atmosphere in the room changed. Their eyes narrowed and their muscles tensed, almost in unison. Cambion. Abomination. Filth. Some of them, still filled with judgment and malice, returned to Uriel. They almost seemed to look through him, as if peering at his very essence to determine why he would be traveling with this creature. Why was he even here? But Uriel saw others, too, only about a quarter of the group, who looked at the archangel with a smile or turned their heads at the cruel words and looked down in shame. Enough! Raphael boomed. The silence was immediate. I know none of you were expecting either of our guests, though I'm not sure which one is more of a surprise. But our brother has finally been allowed to join us, to aid us, to save us, and he assures me that his companion is a friend, not a foe. She shall not be harmed or harassed. You will not think of stinging names to call her because you will only use her name, Chandra. She is under the protection of two archangels. Adriel. An angel against the back wall reacted to the summons. He looked young, though a physical body could never convey the true age of an angel. His skin was light, but not as pale as Chandra's, and he had his long, blonde hair tied back in a ponytail. He smiled at the angel who was sitting near him, one who looked even younger and had short black hair. The two looked like opposites. The blonde one, Adriel, was not as muscular or toned as most angels. He was long-limbed and leaned, whereas the black-haired angel was well-muscled and just under six feet in height. The black-haired angel looked at Uriel and Chandra, but not like the rest. His eyes were filled with excitement. He was happy to see them, even the Cambion. Adriel's were not filled with disdain or malice, nor were they like his friends. Adriel may have been happy, but he was curious above all else. Adriel, I believe we have an empty room down the North Hall that is storing, well, nothing but dust right now. Raphael laughed at his own joke, though most angels seemed to have ignored it. Please, show Chandra down there, and perhaps Isnir can assist you in moving a cot into it. And Chandra, my dear, Adriel will also show you where you can wash up. No doubt it would feel nice to get some of the outside world and the sewers off. We may be used to the smell by now, but I am sure you and my brother are not. Chandra nodded and followed Adriel through one of the two doors leading out of the antechamber. She still did not trust any of the angels aside from Uriel, but Adriel smiled warmly at her, as if he was trying to show that he was not a threat. The black-haired angel who was sitting next to Adriel hopped up and moved after them. The way that he moved was strange, though Uriel could not tell what was peculiar, what about it was peculiar, what about it was peculiar, 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 peculiar. The way that he moved was strange, though Uriel could not tell what about it was peculiar. I can't say the word. I'm trying so hard. <sighs> the way that he moved was strange, though Uriel could not tell what about it was peculiar. It's because Uriel and peculiar, they have a lot of similar sound... Man, I'm spending more time on this word than the rest of the chapter. The way that he moved was strange, though Uriel could not tell what about it was peculiar. It was as if the angel were trying to exaggerate each step, but it was nearly imperceptible. Uriel, Raphael's voice broke through his thoughts. I believe we can do introductions later. Please, let me show you sanctuary. I am sure we both have many questions for each other. Most of the angels in the room were giving Uriel a harder glare, their silent gazes judging him. It was as if his deeds from before the apocalypse meant nothing, as if he were not welcome among them. The end of the world had been a crucible, a means through which these hardened angels had been forged. They knew that Uriel had not been tested the same way they had, and they did not try to hide it. The archangel could not meet the gaze of his sisters or his brothers, so he nodded to Raphael and followed him through a different door than Chandra and the other two angels had entered. The hideout, sanctuary, was a lot larger than Uriel had imagined. The two archangels passed by a series of thick wooden doors as Raphael led his brother deeper into the underground sanctum. Some were open, and the archangel could see that a few held beds. While angels did not need sleep every night, being on earth gave them mortal, physical bodies that required some nourishment and rest. In another room he saw targets and dummies for combat training, all of which looked well used. Yet another room contained a variety of swords, spears, shields, and other weapons, all neatly organized. Sanctuary was more than just a refuge, it was a home. But the angel could not ignore the obvious. Most of the weapons in their armory were covered in a thick layer of dust. The training rooms were large enough for maybe a half dozen angels to use, and though it looked like it was frequented, it also showed signs of neglect. Sanctuary may have been a home, it may have allowed the angels to survive, 
but Uriel guessed that the angels only ventured outside of its protective walls if they had to. At last they came to the room at the end of the hallway. The room beyond that door harbored bookshelves along every wall, overflowing with tomes written in a variety of human languages. In the center of the room was a large stone table, one that connected to the floor and was made of the same material. The table was littered with documents and maps, some hand-drawn and others that appeared to be printed before the apocalypse. The latter were covered in thick strokes of ink, crossing out some cities and towns, drawing in mountains and redirecting rivers. There was a subtle scent of stale water and mold, though it was almost a welcome respite from the smell of the sewers beyond Sanctuary's door. Uriel turned away from the table as he heard the door close behind him and embraced his brother once again. This is a miracle, Raphael said as he wrapped his mighty arms around the younger archangel. You do not know how welcome the sight of you is. Their embrace lasted another few seconds before the brothers released each other. Of the seven archangels, Uriel had always been closest to Raphael. Michael and Gabriel shared a similar bond, and Sariel, Raguel, and Remiel tended to stick with each other as well. They all cared deeply for each other, but some just got along better, as with all families. Which, in Uriel's mind, was strange, as he and Raphael could not have been more different. Uriel lived for the thrill of combat and was a master tactician. Raphael was an angel of healing, not violence, and had always been the voice of reason whenever Uriel's ears would listen. But they were the best of friends, and Uriel could think of no one else he would have rather seen. I cannot agree more, Uriel said, smiling at his older brother. Now, tell me about this place, Sanctuary, and what you are doing beneath Bodice's city. All in due time, brother, Raphael answered, one hand still on Uriel's shoulder. First, you owe me a story. But where have you been? How have you survived? Tell me about this half-demon friend of yours. Why are you traveling with her, and how do I know her? Uriel relayed the story of how he descended to Earth and found his way to the house that Chandra and her sister were hiding in. That is how I knew it had to be you, Uriel said. No other angel has ever cleansed a Cambian child of the demon inside of it. I have been praying that you were still alive, and now I see that those prayers were answered. Tell me, though, you told the other angels that the lives of Chandra and her human sister were entwined now. Is there any truth to that? Raphael chortled. Another great word. There is a chance, though I could not say for sure. But I could not bring myself to allow the death of a newborn, not in this world and not after all her mother had been through. I told the others that simply to spare them. Hadriel didn't even know. I made him believe it, and he made the Cambion believe it. It was the only way I would know for sure that the half-demon would not simply kill her sister. The smile on the archangel's face disappeared. It is sad to hear about Hadriel, though. He was a skilled warrior and a dear friend. Though after all these years, I had assumed they had all been killed, if I'm being honest. Chandra has been of much use to me so far, and I made her a promise, Uriel said. He knew that having a Cambian in Sanctuary would make things tense at best, but might turn deadly without notice. Her sister is alone in a cottage, warded by sigils inscribed by Hadriel and Chandra. She is safe for now, but it would mean a lot to me if we could bring her to the safety of this enclave. Chandra will be an asset herself. I am sure that she will prove herself to all of you. Raphael nodded in agreement. I trust you, Uriel, and I trust the others, too. We will gather the child, Elena, in a day or so. Both sisters are welcome here, and no harm will come to either of them. Uriel turned back around and examined the map of the city. It was roughly drawn and meant little to someone who had not seen the metropolis with their own eyes, but still he tried to commit it to memory. How is it that you came to hide in the sewers? Uriel had to admit that he was a bit frustrated with almost thirty angels keeping to themselves in a city full of demon. He knew the war had been lost, but never expected such passivity from his brothers. You do not know what this world has become, Raphael answered somberly. Shortly after I had tried to save the two children, my group and I were attacked by Bodice's hordes. Only a couple of us managed to escape alive, but there was nowhere to hide. This is Lucifer's domain now. There are a few safe havens for angels. We figured that the last place any demon would look would literally be right under their own feet. So we crawled into the sewers, probably the same way you did, and built this. Raphael motioned all around him with his hands. Eventually, we struck out, looked for supplies and survivors where we could. Our numbers grew. Seven years we have been living here, Uriel. Seven years we have been hiding in this hole in tunnels of stone, shit, and piss. Uriel was surprised. Angels were usually more stoic about their emotions. This world changed people. He could see that now, and his brother was no exception. We were left here to die. This is not how it was supposed to be, brother. I have watched thousands of us torn to shreds, burned alive, massacred. Do not worry, Raphael. I am here now, and I bring with me his wrath. His wrath? The words were venomous. Where was his wrath when we first locked swords with the demons? Where was he when our brothers and sisters were screaming his name? 
Our father abandoned us here, Uriel. I have prayed every night since those black clouds smothered the planet, and every night my prayers have gone unanswered. Not every night, Uriel said, gripping his brother's shoulder. Not the night I descended. Not last night, for I am here today. They will never go unanswered again, not while I still draw breath. Raphael looked up at his brother, his eyes glistening. We are broken, Uriel. We do not live here. We learned long ago from the humans that there is so much more to living than simply being alive. We are surviving. Every day may be our last, a fact that scares our brothers and sisters too much to go against the legions of hell. That was before, Uriel said, smiling at his brother. Now we have two archangels to lead them. Neither Bodus nor his legions can stop us. Uriel saw hope shimmer in his brother's eyes. Okay, little brother, you have your chance. What do you have in mind? First of all, Uriel replied, looking towards his brother's hip. I need a gun. Where can I get one? Raphael laughed. We have a total of two of them, not counting my friends here. The older archangel's hands fell to his hips, gently resting on the two pistols that sat there. You never, ever touch my friends. That's your only warning. Raphael smiled at his brother. The other two are used to guard the tunnels. They cannot be spared. The weapons are too powerful for the demons to let them exist. You know they can't use the weapons themselves, but they are more than capable of wielding them when they are possessing a human. For that reason, we think they keep a small armory in the palace, but they destroy most of them. It made sense to Uriel. A gun could put a human on almost equal footing with a demon, so they would destroy whichever ones they could find, like the ones Uriel had found on the roof of the store. Demons were not like angels. They did not adopt a human form on earth. Their limbs were elongated, disproportionately so compared to their gray, disfigured bodies. Their wicked claws on each finger were designed to rend flesh from bone. Blades and spears were their weapons of choice, though those claws were able to disembowel an angel in seconds. Don't worry, brother, we will get you one, the older angel said with a grin. Okay, Uriel said, looking down to the maps. Where shall we start? It's not as simple as that. We are nowhere near ready, Raphael said, his head hanging. It has been a long time since we have left the sewers for anything other than food. We are not fit to wage open war, not yet. It is not open war I am looking for, brother, the younger archangel rebutted. We would be obliterated. We need a more secretive approach. Fight them without knowing where or who their enemies are. Deplete their resources. Weaken them as much as possible before we strike the death blow and sever the adder's head. Raphael smiled. I like this plan already, Uriel. He joined his brother at the table. But you do not know the city, nor this world. Take some time to rest and clean yourself up. Have your half-demon show you the streets before the sun sets. Then I will draw up the initial plans and we will begin in the morning. Uriel looked at the maps again, taking a moment to consider the idea, and then nodded in agreement. Good. We have bathing pools on the other side of Sanctuary. How long has it been since you felt the warmth of a bath? Over a millennium, the younger angel laughed. They did not have baths in heaven. There was no need for them. Well overdue, then, Raphael said with a wink. Go back to the common room, and through the door on your left. You'll find them at the end of the hall. Uriel nodded once again, then turned and left the room. He admired the construction of Sanctuary as he walked back down the hallway, how the angels had managed to build such a concealed yet vast structure right under the nose of a demon lord was nothing short of a miracle. The whole refuge seemed to have been carved out of the stone itself, piece by piece, using a combination of magic and physical labor. The hallways and rooms took on as much of a straight, rectangular shape as the angels could have mustered, yet the walls, floor, and ceiling were still bumpy and rounded. Some rooms did not even have doors, but others were fitted with crude entrances. Angels did not value physical privacy, did not feel embarrassment, so there was not much they would keep from one another. Uriel arrived back at the antechamber, where many of the other angels had congregated once more. As soon as he came into view, their conversation ceased and he all stared at the newcomer. He would have to earn their trust, Uriel knew that much, but he still felt a sense of disappointment towards them. The archangel was happy that so many had survived together, but they had been inert, causeless, and had simply watched the world fade away. Things would have to change. The archangel knew that he would have to be the one to change them. Uriel could feel their judging stares as he turned and walked down the only other hallway stemming from the antechamber. This one was longer than the other, but had fewer rooms branching off of it. Most of the rooms were fitted with beds and chests, while only one was outfitted for combat training. Near the end was a small room, its door partially ajar. Uriel peered in and saw Chandra's bow, arrows, and a pack. A small mattress had been dragged into the room, disturbing the layer of dust that seemed to cover the entire floor. The Cambion herself, however, was nowhere to be seen. Uriel suppressed his initial worry, confident in Raphael's word. 
The second to last room near the end of the hallway was different than the others. It contained no beds or wardrobes or tables, just an empty room with a single symbol written on the farthest wall. The symbol was a dark red made of dried blood. It was no human symbol, instead written in the language of angels. Father. Uriel whispered the word aloud. The room was used for praying, a means of communication with heaven. The sigil was cracking and wearing away, now just a faint memory of what it used to be. The floor of the room was covered in dust and dirt, undisturbed for what could have been weeks or months. The image saddened Uriel, a gathering of almost thirty angels and not a single one had prayed here in all that time. Had they all lost their faith? The archangel entered the small stone room and dropped to his knees, hands together in front of his chest. He recited a handful of prayers in his own tongue, but soon switched back to the human language that he had begun to grow accustomed to. Father, this world is broken. It is no longer the place that you created, but something far more sinister. A tear fell from the archangel's eye. My brothers are lost, and I do not know if I can lead them to the light. I need all your strength in the trials to come. I will be your sword, as I am your fire. He finished his prayer in angelic, then rose to his feet and left the room. Finally, he came to the last room in the hallway and unleashed a wave of steam as he opened the door. Various pools of water were spread throughout the room, each divided by only a few feet of stone. Water trickled in from holes in the wall, streaming down and merging with each other before flowing into the pools. The room was warm, but not uncomfortably so. The stone floor was bordering on hot, like a sandy shore when the sun was at its highest. Such a feeling was one that Uriel always missed when he was away from Earth. There must have been a natural heat source underneath his feet, one that kept the pools hot. Indulgence was frowned upon in heaven, but Uriel could never resist certain earthly temptations. A hot bath was one such temptation. The angel saw a curtain to change behind, which made him raise an eyebrow. In all his years, he never knew angels to be private or secretive of their physical forms. Perhaps this new world had changed them more than Uriel initially believed. Giving the curtain no more thought, he removed his leather vest and cotton shirt. His muscles were tight from the stress of the past days, and he knew that this bath would help relax them. The archangel removed his boots and pants, and after looking around for reasons he could not put a finger on, completely disrobed and stepped into one of the steaming pools. Instantly, the warming kiss of the water enveloped his body, forcing a relaxed sigh from his lips. The archangel closed his eyes and forgot about the horrible world that lay outside of the stone walls. For the moment, this was the only world he knew, and he was happy. Scene break. The warm embrace of the steam and water lowered the angel's guard, which stopped him from detecting the presence of a muted evil in the room. Behind the curtain, Chandra had panicked and quickly put her clothes back on when she heard the door open. Peeking out from behind the changing curtain, she had watched Uriel enter the room, but had not said a word. He had almost seen her at one point, but the Cambian ducked behind her cover just in time. She began her spying once again, more curious than anything else, and watched as the Archangel had taken off his shirt. Like his arms, his chest and back were covered in ornate tattoos as well. Most striking, however, were the symmetrical wing tattoos that started between his shoulder blades and continued down his muscular back. Chandra had seen such tattoos before. Hadriel had similar ones on his back. Uriel's, however, were a mix of orange and red hues, unlike the black that she had seen before, and the tattoos themselves seemed to wave and dance like flames crawling along the angel's back. They were beautiful and terrifying all at once, works of art that drew the Cambian's gaze and held it there. When the archangel had begun to take his pants off, though, Chandra found herself blushing and moving back behind the curtain. Her face grew warm as if she had done something wrong. She waited a few moments for Uriel to become relaxed in the bath before she silently crept out of the room, her footfall sounding like a mere whisper against the warm ground. Chapter 6 done. Where's my bookmark? There it is. By the way, I don't think I showed these off. Um, got these sweet bookmarks printed for the book signing. I had my very first book signing uh, a couple weeks ago. And we got the cover... <laughs> Got the cover on the front, a little blurb from the back. Come on, focus, focus. You got my socials and my website. It's not focusing. Focus for me. Anyway, I'm not messing with that. And on the back, you got Chandra. Love the bookmarks. So, that was chapter six. And again, this is more of a world building chapter, similar to chapter five. Um, but exciting stuff in that we met Raphael and the other angels of Sanctuary. Though what was important for me in this chapter was to really establish that the idea of angels that we have in our mind and the one that we used to form Uriel does not represent angels that exist on Earth. 
underneath the black clouds. These angels have been here since the beginning of the war or sometime during it and are now trapped. They've seen their friends or their brothers and sisters die. They've seen humans die. They've seen demons conquer the world and are now just hiding and scavenging for their lives. We get a taste of that and that will become more and more apparent as we continue on. One thing that I, I always debated when first writing Archangel is, hey, you know, he's meeting another Archangel. What are the odds? But that's kind of referenced a couple times in there that it's a miracle and whether or not a miracles that actually exist is kind of left up in the air. It's kind of up to you to determine whether this was chance, whether it was fate, whether it was you know divine intervention of some sort. So that's that's what I lay that down to. And then one of the coolest features I think of the angels in Shadow's Advent are their wing tattoos. So you'll see wings manifested in later chapters, but every angel has, in addition to their normal tattoos, the ones that give them power, they have tattoos on their back that are where their wings manifest. And so normal angels, as Chandra explained during her little spying episode there, um, like Hadriel, they just have black tattoos, the same kind of ink that are used for the runes. But archangels are different, and Uriel's were shown there, and they're the only ones we see in archangels, so little insider info for you. But archangel wings are different than normal angel wings, and thus the tattoos that manifest them are different as well. So Uriel's are orange and red and yellow, and they look like fire crawling along his back in the shape of wings. Uh, probably one of my favorite parts. I think that's really it, though. The mission may no longer seem so daunting for Uriel and Chandra. Taking down a demon lord might be easier now that they have almost 30 angels backing them up, but at the same time, Chandra is a half-demon, and these angels have been driven literally underground by demons. So expect some animosity there, expect some tension, and beyond that, we'll see you next week for Chapter 7.